Okay, welcome uh, to the online students. Uh, welcome to all of you here. Uh, Bend this a bit. Okay. Uh, okay, before we begin, can someone open us in prayer? Uh, Jesus, our Lord, we thank you for this day, our Lord Father. We thank you for this time of gathering, our Lord Father, to listen to your teachings, our Lord Father God Jesus, as we are going to learn, our Lord Father. We surrender and we submit our minds, we are ha our hearts, our Lord Father, into your hands, our Lord Father. Even we surrender, Mamma, Lord Father, into your gracious hands, our Lord Father. Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask you to speak to us, to speak and impart into our lives, our Lord Father, through Mamma, Lord Father. Let every word that you're going to speak, O oh Lord Father, let it fall on the good ground, O oh Lord Father, and uh, let it bear fruit for your kingdom, Jesus. We surrender everything into your mighty hands, O oh Lord Father. God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll continue from where we stopped yesterday. Uh, I also want to let you all know that I've posted the dates for presentations. So you all can take, a, based on the order, like when that person, uh, yeah, who is. So uh, yeah, just uh, look at the spreadsheet on Google Classroom so you know the date and you can be prepared with your presentation. The same spreadsheet, yeah. Okay, so yesterday we um, read about Paul being at uh, Ephesus, right? So uh, there was a little bit of background information about Ephesus that we didn't cover yesterday. So it's just a little bit of information. So uh, Ephesus was a pretty large city. Um, so it has a population, it had a population about 225,000 uh, people, so larger than Jerusalem. And uh, one of the goddesses that they worshipped there was Diana. Uh, and so they had a huge temple built for her. And we see that um, some of the people who constructed shrines, who made shrines for her, then have a problem with Paul because they're scared that they're going to lose business, right? So she was the god who was worshipped, goddess who was worshipped there. There was a huge temple there, which was actually one of the biggest buildings of that time. It was one of the seven wonders of the world at that time. Uh, and uh, made of marble and had a street made of marble leading up to the um, to the temple. And they had an idol of uh, Diana, which they believed had fallen from the sky. So um, that was a goddess who was worshipped in Ephesus. So we'll continue from where we stopped yesterday, which was uh, Acts 19.21. Um, We'll, I think we read those last two verses, but we'll read from there and then go on from there. Penyon can read Acts 19, 21 and 22. Acts 19, verse 21 and 22. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed all purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. Okay, so thank you. So um, Paul's main reason for going to Jerusalem was to take an offering that he had collected from the uh, various churches. They were going to take that to the church in Jerusalem. So when he sends Timothy and Erastus to Macedonia, he's sending them to collect the offering from Macedonia. And then uh, all of them together will go to Jerusalem with the offering. So we see uh, several references to that offering 
in uh, various parts of the New Testament, but one of them is Romans 15, 23 to 29, where he talks about going to Jerusalem with the offering. Okay, so he stays in Asia while they've gone to Macedonia. And in Asia, it's thought uh, that he must have ministered to all of the uh, revelations. The church is mentioned in revelations, right? You have a map in your book, so I won't share it on my screen. Um, but the seven churches of Revelation were right around Ephesus. Um, and he stayed in Asia. And also earlier, we read that a lot of the regions in Asia were being uh, influenced as he was preaching in Ephesus. So uh, it's thought that all of these churches were also uh, being reached at that time. OK, so we'll uh, go on from there. Um, if someone can just read 1 Corinthians 1, 11, and then uh, chapter 16, and then go to chapter 16 from there. But 1 Corinthians 1, 11. First. 1 Corinthians 1, 11. First, some members of the Chul's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Okay, and then uh, chapter 16, 17 to 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 17 to, 17 to 19. I'm glad about the coming of uh, Stephanus and Fortunatus and Akagiochus. For what was lacking on your party, they supplied. For they refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge such men. So it's thought that while uh, Paul was here in Ephesus, uh, people from Corinth came and met with him and brought reports of what was going on in the church. So then he writes 1 Corinthians uh, while he is in Ephesus. He writes 1 Corinthians as a response to some of the reports that he's received. Um, and he also writes the uh, letter to the Galatians at the same time. And uh, he sends Titus with this letter to Corinth uh, to go and kind of oversee what's happening in the church and to take his letter back to them. So uh, while all of this is happening, while he is in Ephesus, we see the in Acts 19, 23 to 41 is where uh, this big dispute happens between uh, the people who are building shrines for that goddess Diana. So they look at it as a business and they're earning income from this. But because Paul is coming in and now drawing people away from worship to Diana, uh, it's a threat to their business. And so they, uh, he, they start to go around uh, kind of getting people on their side, more from the perspective of uh, People are turning away from our goddess to follow this other way. Uh, we need to protect our faith. We need to protect our religion, which is like what we experience here, right? Uh, this is the same thing. So while their perspective was coming from a business, they were trying to protect their business and their income, uh, they made it an issue of these people are uh, kind of yeah, drawing people away from our religion. So we need to protect our religion. Uh, so they make a big noise about it. But um, their governor has some, I don't know, some decorum. And so he kind of turns them away and says, if you have an issue, take it to the court of law. Um, but as of now, you've already brought trouble upon yourselves by making this big riot. So because of all of this, Paul then leaves here. And he moves on from Ephesus. So we'll start from Acts 20 and see what happened next. Uh, just read Acts, or maybe I'll just read it. Acts 20, verse 1, and a little bit of verse 2. Uh, when the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He traveled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people. So uh, he joins. Um, Titus, who he had sent earlier, he'd sent, uh, oh, sorry, not Titus, Timothy and Erastus to Macedonia. So he goes and joins them there. Uh, let's just go back to the map. So from Ephesus here in Asia, 
he goes all the way to Macedonia there. Okay. And uh, these are the cities he um, goes to Neapolis, Philippi, Thessalonica, Beria. These were the churches that had previously been planted. Um, so here it's believed that he, is, he wrote Second Corinthians. Uh, again, he suffers a lot while he's in Macedonia because of persecution and opposition that arises. Uh, but Titus arrives there from Corinth. And so he is comforted by Titus's presence and Titus's report of what's going on in uh, the church in Corinth. So someone can read 2 Corinthians 7, 5 to 7. There are a few references from 2 Corinthians, so I'll just uh, ask you to read all of them. 7, 5 to 7. 2 Corinthians 7, 5, five, to, five to 7. For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflict, inside were fears. Nevertheless, God who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you. When he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I, rejo I rejoiced even more. And 2 Corinthians 8.23. If anyone incurs about Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker concerning you. Or if our brethren are incurred about, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So from uh, so Titus comes back with that report and then he goes back to Corinth with this second letter to the Corinthians. So uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And uh, also with the uh, responsibility to collect the uh, money that the Corinthian church had collected over that last year and to give it to him to take back to Jerusalem. Okay, so uh, from Macedonia, Paul then moves on uh, to Greece. Uh, let's just see Acts 20 verse 2 onwards till... Yeah, till verse uh, 17, I think. Yeah. Uh, chapter 20, verse 2 to 17. Now when he had gone over that region and encouraged them with many words, he came to Greece and stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return to Macedonia. And Sopater of Berea accompanied him to Asia, also Aristarchus and Secondus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derb and Timothy and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. These men going ahead waited for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi, Philippi after the day of unleavened bread, and in five days joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven days. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they gathered where they were gathered together now, and in the window sat a certain young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep he was overcome by sleep and as Paul continued speaking he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead but Paul went down fell on him and embracing him said do not trouble yourselves for his life is in him now when he had come up had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while even till daybreak he departed and they brought a the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. Then he, we, uh, then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assos. They were intended to take Paul on board, for so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and came to 
Mytilene. We sailed from there and the next day came opposite Chios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Trogilium. The next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders, elders of the church, and when they had come to him he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And see now I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. Thank you. So, um... <laughs> Uh, so we see from Macedonia that he goes goes down to Greece, right? And um, and it's thought that he might have gone to Corinth at that time as well. And then he's supposed to go from Greece to Syria, but because of a plot from some people to kill him, he goes back through Macedonia and then. Uh, to all of these little places. So you can see all of these places named here. There's um, Asos, there's Mytilene, Chios, Samos, Patmos, um, all of that close to Ephesus, but not right. He doesn't go all the way to Ephesus. And so he stops at Miletus. And that's where the Ephesian leaders come and meet him there. OK, so. While he's um, while he's at Greece, uh, he stays there about three months, and um, he writes a letter to the Romans from Greece. Um, and while he's staying there, he uh, he's encouraging the churches in that area, and then takes a lot of. So there are so many leaders he's raised up. Right in this time, we see in verse four. Um, there are many, many people who are accompanying him on this journey. So uh, this is the process of discipleship, right? Where you are raising up people and then you're taking them with you uh, on the work that you're doing. And it's in the process of doing the work that they also um, are kind of raised to your level of uh, ministry and raised to your level of knowledge and all of that. That's what Jesus did with his disciples. So um, we see many leaders who are raised, and these are the people that he takes with him uh, to back to Ephesus and then to and to Miletus and then to Jerusalem. Uh, and his reason for going to Jerusalem in a hurry is he wants to reach there before the Pentecost and he wants to take that uh, offering with him. Now, when he was at Troas is where the um, Eutychus, so Troas is right there uh, in Asia. That's where he goes back uh, from Macedonia. And that's where Eutychus uh, dies and is raised back from the dead. From there, they move on uh, and they go through all of those small cities to Miletus. So uh, Miletus is where he stops. He meets the Ephesian leaders. He kind of says goodbye to them, not knowing if he's going to ever see them again. Uh, so it's quite a, an emotional uh, kind of goodbye. And then from there, he moves on, goes back to uh, Jerusalem. Uh, but before that, he also uh, goes to, or yeah, from Jerusalem, uh, before Jerusalem, they go to Caesarea. And so uh, at Caesarea, let's just read 17 is where we stopped, right? Um, let's just read from Acts 21, 23 onwards. Let me just check if that's the right reference, sorry.
X. Yeah, I think we can um, X20. We stopped at X20, was it? X or 21? 2017. Okay, so I think it's X2023, 20, not 21, 23. Yeah, so from 2023 onwards, someone can read to the end of the passage. Chapter 20, verse uh, 23. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim to aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated, hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which, be, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them so be on your own guard uh, be on your guard remember that for three years i never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears now i commit you to god and to the word of his grace which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified i have not uh, converted anyone silver or gold or clothing you yourself, yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my com companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of words, the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. Okay, so this is a really nice summary of all that Paul did while he was in Ephesus. Uh, and um, he talks about how he worked, right? How he worked to support the work that he was doing. Uh, he talks about not coveting. Uh, so uh, some things that we also uh, can learn as ministers, right? Not uh, coveting the riches of the people that he saw there. He didn't try and take their money. He worked for his own uh, needs to support the work that he was doing. Um, and he says, I preach the whole will of God to you. There was nothing that uh, I have not, that I was, that was entrusted to me that I didn't fulfill right um he's given them everything he's trained them he's raised them up and now he's entrusting them back to god uh, so that's a very uh, good healthy way of raising leaders uh, where you uh, teach them everything that there is that you have been entrusted with that god has revealed to you uh, you uh, preach as much as god has so uh, what he says here, I've completed the task. Um, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news. So he has been faithful to the task that God entrusted to him. Whatever God has entrusted to him, he's done. Uh, and now he's saying, I'm giving you back to God. Be on your guard. Okay, so there is there are going to be challenges. Now you need to be prepared to face those challenges. Uh, I'm not going to continue to be there with you to protect you. Um, a very healthy way of leaving and moving on. 
right? Sometimes it's very hard to do that when you have raised people, when you've invested in them, you want to continue to stay there and be part of what's going on. Uh, although it is very, very sad as we read here, uh, it is a very emotional thing to let go and move on. Uh, it is important also when God is leading you to another place uh, to be able to do that and to be prepared for the for how hard it's going to be uh, emotionally to let that go and to move on. Um, so from here, Paul then moves on. Um, this next chapter is very nice, but also long. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, but let's just see how much we can do. Um, okay, let's just do the first part, 1 to 16, Acts 21, 1 to 16. Someone can read that. Now it came to pass that when we had departed from them and set out, running a so it course we came to cause the following day Rhodos and from there to Patra and finding a ship sail, sailing over to Ionia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was unload her cargo and finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. When we had come to the end of the days, we departed and went on our way. And they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we knelt down on the shore and prayed. When we had taken our leave of one another, we boarded the ship and we turned, returned home. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, and we came to Ptolemyas, greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companion departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of, one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, and as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hand and feet, and said, Though says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owned this belt and deliver him into the hands of the genders. Now when we hear these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of Lord Jesus. So when he would not be Proceeded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. Also, some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us to brought with them a certain man's son of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. Okay, thank you. So uh, we see from Miletus, where he met the uh, Ephesian leaders, they go on to Patara, then they go to Tyre, they go to Ptolemais, they go to Caesarea, and then to Jerusalem, if you're looking at your map. Um, so uh, that's all in the Syria region, where they are visiting these last few places. So in all these places, he's recognizing that his work is complete in all these places, and he's uh, kind of uh, saying his goodbyes to all of them. Um, so one thing we read in the previous uh, passage was, in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me uh, that there's, there's danger, there's prison, 
all of that that lies ahead of me in the city. Okay, so it was not like he was going there not expecting hardship or persecution. He knew it was coming and he would still go in there uh, ready to face whatever it was for the sake of the gospel. That is something that only the Holy Spirit can enable us to do, uh, to be so bold and to be so sacrificial for the gospel. Uh, so even here, as before he's going to Jerusalem, uh, there's a warning that comes to him and he's willing to go there face death. Uh, for the sake of Christ. Um, and so he continues on in his journey, knowing the dangers that lie ahead. Um, now, he also meets Philip here. So Philip was mentioned earlier in Acts as one of the uh, seven uh, leaders in the church. I think the reference is Acts 20, or this is where he is mentioned, uh, Acts 6, 5, sorry. So he's one of the seven who, and he also preached in Samaria in Acts 8, 4 to 12. So he meets Philip and his family there. Uh, so they're continuing to meet other um, other believers as well, continuing to uh, be kind of um, fellowship with other churches, right? As they're going here, they're, re they're encouraging the leaders, they're fellowshiping, fellowshipping with other believers and making their way along back to Jerusalem. Um, anything else that we need to cover? Yeah, so from there, uh, we see, we go into the next part where Paul actually is imprisoned. Uh, that is from AD 58 to 60. Uh, and this happens after Paul arrives at Jerusalem. So like that, he was warned. Uh, what he was warned of actually takes place. Uh, during this time, we see that Luke has Luke is with him. So we see in verse 10, uh, after we had been there a number of days. So Luke is there traveling with Paul. And when Paul is imprisoned, Luke is also there. Uh, Luke will then travel with Paul to Caesarea where he's actually put in prison. Um, so he had people who were with him even in this journey of uh, being imprisoned. There were people who were encouraging him. There were visitors who were coming in. And he does a lot of writing to uh, the churches during his time in imprisonment. So good use of time, right? He, Even though he's in prison, He's uh, using that time to continue to encourage the leaders, continue to stay in touch with them. Uh, as the visitors are coming in, they're telling him what's going on in these churches. And he is sending out these letters to the churches to address issues that they are facing. Um, so we will uh, look a little bit at what happens when he goes to Jerusalem and um, Maybe his arrest will kind of just, yeah, we'll, we'll do a summary of it. Uh, so Acts 21, 17. We'll just read from 17 to 26. Acts 21, uh, 17. And when we had come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with went in with us to uh, James, and all the elders were present. When he had greeted them, he told in detail those things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many matters of Jews there are who have believed, and they were all zealous for the law. But they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, nor to walk according to the customs. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have, uh, you have come. Therefore, do what we will tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be purified with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and that all may know that those things, uh, those things of which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, 
we have written and decided that they should observe no such thing expect that they should keep themselves from things offered to idols from blood from things strangled and from sexual immorality then paul took the men and the next day having been uh, purified with them entered the temple to announce the uh, expiration of the days of purification at which time an offering should be made for each one of them now when the seven days were almost ended the jews from asia seeing him in the temple stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him crying out men of israel help this is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people the law and the place and furthermore he also brought greeks into the temple and he defiled this holy place for they had previously uh seen triumphus uh, uh triformus the Ephesian with him in the city whom they supposed that Paul ha Paul had brought into the temple and all the city was disturbed and the people ran together seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple and immediately the doors were shut now as they were seeking to kill him news came to the 26 okay yeah um so this uh, Yeah, so this is basically what happened. So he's warned of going to Jerusalem that uh, he is going to uh, be imprisoned, and he knows that he's going into that. So even as he goes there, he meets with the elders in the church, brings them reports of what has been happening among the Gentiles. Uh, they themselves know that the dangers uh, that he is in danger, and so they give him certain instructions to um, hopefully protect himself just uh, so that he can communicate to the jews who are um, angry with him for for not following the law for encouraging others to not follow the law uh, to show them that he still respects the law and he still uh, believes that it is to be followed among the jews uh, so he uh, he goes to the temple and he's he does all of the things that they've instructed him to do uh but still when he goes back uh later on is when the jews see him and they uh, capture him so this is where he is arrested and uh, he's taken to uh he's taken to the commander and all the charges that they have against him are brought before the commander uh from there he's then taken uh we'll read so all of this is the next few chapters is where he speaks to the crowd we won't read all of that uh, but he uh, shares his own faith with them uh, talks about uh, what he's doing why he's preaching jesus and then he's taken before the sanhedrin um, now when he's taken before the sanhedrin he again is able to speak to them but there is a plot to kill him and so uh, there are a few people who go to the sanhedrin and tell them call him back uh, to come back to explain something and when he's coming back to you we will kill him so we've taken a vow that we're not going to eat or drink until we uh, kill him so in uh, that time because the news about some people plotting to kill him goes to uh some of the leaders they're able to take him away and he's taken to Caesarea uh and that's how he ends up being imprisoned in Caesarea from AD 58 to AD 60 so that uh now we're in Acts 23 verses 23 onwards is where he's moved into Caesarea uh and taken before governor Felix um let's see if we need to read any of that okay so uh luke here accompanies him to uh to zaria and um but when uh, when paul is in zaria luke's going back and forth between jerusalem and uh zaria so it seems that this was a time that luke wrote the gospel of luke because he is in jerusalem he's able to meet all of the people who were with jesus uh, during his ministry and he's able to gather information to write the gospel uh from there 
let's i think don't think there's any thing else we need to read about his imprisonment in Caesarea. Uh, but um, we can move on to the last part, which is Paul's journey to Rome and his Roman imprisonment. OK. Um, we didn't look at OK. Yeah, we looked at all of this. OK, so let's move on to Acts 27. Okay, um, we will maybe read, a, I wonder if we should even read from here. Okay, we'll just refer to the notes uh, instead of reading from the passage itself. So this is uh, where Paul travels from Jerusalem to Rome and where he's imprisoned in Rome. So while he's in Rome, he writes the book to the Colossians. He writes Philemon, Ephesians, Philippians. So these are all known as the prison epistles because he writes it while he's in prison. Um, and although Paul himself had not been to Colossae, he writes a letter to the Colossians um, from Rome. Um, so there is a brother Epaphras who he meets earlier uh, we read about him meeting Epaphras. Um, I think, yeah, he meets him somewhere in Acts 19. In chapter 19, he meets Epaphras. And so Epaphras brings a account of what is happening in the church in Colossae. And so he writes a letter to the church there, kind of uh, addressing some of the things that he's heard about. Um, he, While he's there, there are other people who join him. Uh, some people who are kind of just encouraging him, taking care of him, bringing reports of what's going on in the church, going back to the church with his messages or his letters. Uh, so there's Onesimus. So we read in uh, the book of Philemon, he talks about Onesimus. Onesimus is uh, a slave who actually uh, runs away from his master and who goes and who is with Paul when Paul is in prison. So Paul writes on behalf of Onesimus to Philemon uh, and asks him to receive Onesimus back uh, as a slave because uh, running away as a slave could actually uh, was a, like there was death was the punishment for running away. So he's sending him back to him saying, please accept him uh, and kind of giving him self as a reference for Onesimus' sake. Um, then there are other people uh, who join him. So in Philemon 124, there's Mark, there's Aristarchus, Demis, Luke, uh, different people who are visiting Paul while he's in Rome. Uh, Timothy was also with him uh, while he's there. So in Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, Philippians 2.19, Paul talks about Timothy being there. Um, and yeah, he also mentions in Colossians and Philemon. So even while Paul is in prison, he is continuing ministry in whatever way he can, right? He's still continuing to build the church, still continuing to uh, encourage them, still continuing to address issues that are there. Uh, he's In all of these letters, you'll see, I'm, I'm praying for you. Uh, I've heard about this, this, this that's going on, all of these things. So he's still staying very connected to the work that is going on and uh, continuing to use his uh, role as an apostle to build the leaders uh, of that time through the people who are coming and visiting him. So he's mentoring and encouraging them. And then he's also then sending out instructions for the rest of the church. Uh, so while he's in prison, he also meets, uh, let's just look at that, uh, Acts 28, 16. Acts 28, 16. When we arrived, arrived in Rome, Paul was permitted to have his own private lodging through lodging, though he was guarded by a soldier. 
And so this is a soldier to whom uh, Paul actually ministers and uh, shares the gospel. And um, he takes all of these opportunities, right? So even the people in the prison, he's taking opportunities to preach to them and to share the gospel with them. Um, so from here on, I think uh, Acts 28, he's still under guard, but he's uh, able to meet people and able to preach. So we'll see uh, that there were the Jewish leaders came to visit him in Acts 28, 17, and he preaches to them uh, while he is in prison. At the end of this chapter is when uh, Paul is released for some time. Uh, he's released from prison. So verses 30 and 31 says, For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus with all boldness and without hindrance. Uh, so that's a really good uh, summary of Paul's ministry, right? Uh, he proclaimed the kingdom of God, taught about the Lord Jesus with all boldness and without hindrance. Uh, so no matter what the challenges were that he was facing, uh, no matter what uh, hindrances, what opposition, what persecution, uh, whether he knew it was coming or didn't know it was coming, in all of that, he continued to preach about the kingdom of God. And uh, he, he didn't stop because of fear. He didn't stop to protect himself. Uh, protect himself. He just continued to preach boldly without allowing all of those things to hinder the work that he was doing. And uh, like we talked about earlier, even if there were challenges, he kept just moving on to the next place. Right. So knowing when to move on uh, to a new place and when to stay on and face the persecution uh, that was there, he did whatever it took to do the work that God God had entrusted to him. Uh, and to fulfill that task, but doing all of that being led by the Holy Spirit, knowing that this was where God wanted him to be at that time, uh, to fulfill the work that he had entrusted to him. So we'll stop there. We'll read about Paul's final years uh, next week. And then from there, we'll go into post-Acts, into the early church and all of that. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us online. OK, I look at uh, so for all those who've emailed me with resources and all that, I'll look at that uh, today and respond. Thank you, all of you uh, who joined us online. Thanks.